That's a fish. A fish. Got him. Got him. You really want to cast by all the stuff, and that's where the fish are hiding. Oh, got him. Whoa. All right. Welcome back, y'all. We're just pulling up to the spot, but actually we uh, are looking at a little snake right here before we get started. Check it out. What are you, kid? <laughs> well, apparently the uh, water snakes are over here at the spot. We're about to drop in the John boat, and today we're actually gonna talk about our top five picks for fall fishing baits and what is in our fall tackle box. Devin's excited because uh, big swim baits are one of those and she's ready to catch a giant. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's roll. Right into the stumps. <laughs> Whew, quick wardrobe switch. It is hot. And you know these breathable long sleeves are our favorite. Let me go ahead and break out the tackle box, ladies and gentlemen. Before we break out the tackle box, y'all, thank you so much to Carl's Bait and Tackle for sponsoring today's episode. Everything in this box you can purchase from Carl's Bait and Tackle, and you can actually save $10 on your first order with code WESTON10. But if you purchase quickly before October 18th, it's actually going to pair and stack with deals from Carl's Club Member Week. So you've got an opportunity right now to get on over there, use that code. You can sign up for a free trial as a Carl's Club member, get free shipping on most items, and save a ton of money. You're going to also be able to stack that code on top of it. So it's a fantastic time to grab anything we're about to talk about in today's episode again thank you Carl's let's get right into it so let's break this thing out and tell you guys our favorite base for the fall specifically top five and I'm gonna kind of branch out just based on the fact that maybe some of you are fishing different types of fisheries grass rock different things of that nature and then also some weather conditions that might lead you to throw a variation of our top five so what we're gonna do is run through the tackle box real quick and then we're gonna actually fish these baits and I hope we catch some good ones. All right, so obviously, I say obviously, everyone's talking about it right now. Our first choice is top water, and I'm not gonna narrow it down to one specific because if you're fishing lily pads, if you're fishing the thickest cover, I would recommend something like a walking frog, something like the Guggen Squad Filthy Frog right here as well as the poppin' frog if you got a little bit more chop, but you're still trying to fish that thick cover or right along the edges of it. That's when the poppin' really comes into play, a little bit more open water scenario. What the standard filthy frog does is you can walk it and leave it in the strike zone a little bit longer in that thick cover, but when you don't have as much of that thickness and you wanna work this guy, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pop and displace more water and draw those strikes in from a little bit further away. Frogs are one of the most fun ways to catch bass. That is 100% true. You're gonna use a beefy rod and heavy braid and smash those hook sets. Now a variation is going to be something like a buzz bait or a whopper plopper. Think the Guggen Squad Revolver. These are going to be when it's a little bit more windy, a little bit more overcast. That's when I'm typically throwing this right here. And it doesn't have to be in thick cover. I am typically casting along the bank. A lot of these fish are moving up shallow for the fall. And so slayer fishing ponds, I like to just go and cast almost parallel with the bank or maybe out at a 45 and cover water. I don't fish too much of the same spot twice. I just cover water and get those hits. Now, when you fish these lakes and larger bodies of water, you're probably casting towards the banks and expect some big fish on top water this season. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Next up is crankbaits, and I haven't narrowed it down to any one specific style because the thing is, uh, if you're fishing a little bit of rock, if you're fishing some riprap, think like dams over there at your lakes or maybe some shallow ponds, you might wanna break out something like a square bill. So I've got a couple options right here. Shad patterns is a really go-to confidence color for me, and I've got a couple of them in this box. I've got a banger to start things off. This is Guggen Squad's two to five foot diver right here, a little square bill to bounce around off those rocks. You want to be hitting bottom and a specifically a shallow diver because I say those fish are moving up shallow. They're feeding on a lot of bait fish. This is a perfect opportunity to catch a lot of giants here in the fall. And depending on the size of the bait fish, the minnows you might see cruising around in the lakes and the ponds, you might downsize a little bit. We've got a mini banger right here. You'll just maybe upsize if you get a lot of bites and you want to target those big specifically, but the smaller size is a great way to get in front of a lot of fish, cover water quickly, power fishing in the fall. My last tip here is maybe you got a lot of grass and you need to throw the lipless. This guy right here isn't gonna get anything caught on the bill because it does not have one. And what you're gonna do with that lipless is you can rip it through the grass. So if you get caught on a little bit of that grass, what you can do is just kind of give that rod a quick twitch and you'll shed that grass and you'll get a lot of bites working through the cover that you can't with those square bills. Next up, and these are in no specific order by the way, uh, they're all gonna catch you a ton of fish, is the chatterbait and bladed jig option. So think about something 
something like the uh, the Z-Mans that have been out for a long time. Think about something like the clickbait working in and around grass. Oh my goodness, are you going to get catches? The idea here is those thumping blades on the front are going to cause a lot of vibration in the water. And if you've got mixed clarity or stained water, go with something like Shad. And if it's a little bit clearer, go with something like those natural colors. Oftentimes with our bladed jigs, we love to throw a swim bait on the back end. We have 3.3 inch saucy swimmers on the back of these guaranteed to catch some absolute giants. This is just such an easy bait to fish. You can cast one of these at the ponds all day you're going to catch them. You can go to the big water, you're going to bring them in. The bladed jig is just so much fun. It's got one large single hook, so you're slamming those hook sets. It's a little bit different than the treble hooks on those crankbaits where you're just kind of leaning in. It's a different bite and a ton of fun. You got to start throwing some chatter baits. Similar to what I mentioned with the buzz bait, if you're fishing ponds, I would just go out and cast this out of 45 along the bank and get ready to catch a lot of fish up shallow on the chatter baits this fall. Now a little variation is maybe it's really windy, really choppy, or there's just terrible visibility like chocolate milk. I might skip the chatterbait in that instance and I might go with the spinnerbait. There's just so much flash on a spinnerbait. It's like almost a slow retrieve and it's going to get their attention cruising by nice and slow. You're going to get big hits. I like to throw a half ounce because if I need to get it down deeper a little quicker, I can just slow down my retrieve and know it's going to get down low, but at the same time I can cover water quickly with that larger size. It has been my most effective way to something like a half ounce. Feel free to lighten it to a quarter ounce if you're just fishing very shallow water but the spinner bait just gives you that opportunity in those windy and overcast conditions to draw them in from even further because of all that flash those fish are going to key in on it expect some big hits on the spinner bait when maybe the bladed jig is not the best option just because there is extremely terrible clarity or it is so windy that extra flash is what's necessary you'll notice this one does not have a trailer on it i tend to throw them without trailers oftentimes but if you want to bulk it up and target some big bass go ahead and throw you a saucy swimmer on the back and now you're locked in loaded with some extra kick, more vibration, and a bigger target for those hungry fall bass. Second to last on the list is going to be swim baits. Now fall is one of the best times of the year to throw big swim baits and small swim baits. Let me explain. A small swim bait is going to get you on some serious numbers. One of our favorite ways to rig them is on a simple Ned Rig hook. This is a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer. Natural color going to draw in a ton of strikes. You can catch a lot of different species on this. Small bait fish are going to be loaded in almost every body of water you fish and you can hardly miss when you throw something like this. You can also drop down the line size. You've got that exposed hook so your hookup ratio is going to be a little better than some of these other swim bait options I'm going to talk about momentarily. If you've got open water and great clarity, something like a natural small size swim bait is going to get you a ton of bites, big and small. But then there's hardly anything that looks like a school of fish that can cruise through the cover better than a swim bait on an underspin. So this is probably going to be what you see us catch a lot of our big fish on this fall. Uh, we've caught so many giants on the 4.8 inch saucy swimmer and an underspin hook. Now it's no secret Guggen Squad is working on some terminal tackle and soon enough you're going to see Guggen Squad underspin. So be on the lookout. But right now I believe this is on a 6 aught hook and this thing is just a go-getter. You can work it through the grass because that hook is not exposed. It sits flush with the top of the bait. There's that little indention and it is a tough one to beat when it comes to catching fish and some thicker cover that maybe you can't work that spinner bait bladed jig through. But also just know the moving bite is what's hitting this fall. You can get away with power fishing and catching big numbers. So that's why there's so many different moving baits options but let's break out our last variant in the swim bait category the big swim baits these guys right here are going to be when you're targeting those giants and there's no better time than fall to break these things out summer it can get a little tough winter it could be great if you're going out trying to get one big sizable fish but fall you'll catch numbers on the big baits. so if you thought about getting into big swim baits this is the time a lot of times we'll just creep some big hard plastic glide baits or multi-jointed swim baits along with these soft plastic baits down through the grass and believe me you're going to catch numbers and expect the big ones so swim baits definitely a way to go and lastly the good old fashioned Texas rig. Y'all knew it was going to happen. Look, if you want to fish the thickest of cover, if you want to cast into the trees, if you want to get into the brush, if you want to get into the grass, if you want to even swim a Texas rig, you can make this thing happen. And it's so versatile. I could probably fish all year on a Texas rig and catch fish. That is just the facts. And so what we have here, is our favorite go-to creature bait. This is the Guggenbaits Bandito Bug. This is in their newest color, Sprayed Lettuce. It has caught us so many big fish this year. Uh, it's almost tough to count. We have that on a Guggen Squad Hammer Hook. This is the 4 aught size, which is really a great go-to size for all Guggen baits. I can get away with throwing a Mondo Worm on this thing. I can get away with throwing the creature bait, the Bandito Bug, or the Crack and Crawl. I mean almost anything in the lineup, that 4 aught Hammer Hook is going to accommodate you. So if you only had one size hook, go ahead and grab a couple of those. And then we top it off with a quarter ounce tungsten weight 
to get down in a nice and slow fall. Half ounce if we were going uh, fishing out deeper, but remember it's fall, a lot of these fish are moving up shallow, and so a quarter ounce is going to have that just nice majestic, slow and steady fall, and they cannot resist. The bandito bug is going to represent bluegill, it's going to represent crawfish, it's going to represent so many different types of forage that these bass are feeding on. You really can't go wrong, and if you're fishing through the really thick stuff, you might even add a weight peg on the top. And what that's going to do is keep that weight pinned to the bait so that you can get through some of those branches a little bit easier. Maybe some of that rock you're fishing, different things of that nature. But oftentimes, I would say 80% of the time, we skip the weight peg and we just leave the weight free. That is entirely up to you, and that is the Texas rig. You know we're going to be breaking it out this fall, so we had to include it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break out all these baits and actually start fishing them for you guys. Hopefully catch some tanks and provide additional tips as we go through the video. And if you were just here to watch some fishing, it all starts right now. All right, y'all, I'm opting with the kind of a middle grounds here. I can work this nice and slow through the grass or I could also just kind of crank it on in and bring it in quickly we've got a lot of grass here and so the square bill is not going to be my option I might break out that lipless I'm definitely thinking about the clickbait here soon um, but right now starting with a swim bait little underspin Devin's also throwing one of the big swim bait options and if we have to we'll break out that Texas rig and fish some cover there was a big storm last night I mean it's been like 30 mile an hour winds and and this water is chalked up more than normal. So the, the bite could be a little slower today, but that is not to say these baits aren't gonna put on a show for y'all. I'm looking forward to seeing if we can catch them even after the storm when the bite is normally slowed down. And there's one right, just kidding, tree. Don't ruin the spot. Go ahead and cast by those trees. Just leave me and get them, get a cast in a good spot. Yeah, just fish it slow. Got it. Try the spinner bait for a second just because it's so murky, but I didn't get any hits. That the swim bait hasn't got any hits yet. Let me, uh, we might have to slow it down just to even start things off. Let me throw this Texas rig for a second on the cover and see if we can get something. Thank you. Oh, I might have a bite. That's a fish. Got him. Okay, Texas rig got us a decent one. And I feel like this reel seat's loose. Yep, a little loose. <laughs> it's been a while since I've tightened that up. Woo, cool. We got a decent one, y'all. Texas rig to start things off this fall. Let's go. Nice one on the bandito bug. Like I say, <laughs> tough to miss with that creature bait, y'all. Just throwing in there in the cover. The moving bite seems a little slow today, so that's what we're starting off with. And this is that California craw color, almost like a, a watermelon red flake, maybe slightly darker. It's really a standout color and mixed clarity water, which is fantastic. So California craw, a great option for you guys if green pumpkin, purple, and sprayed lettuce is potentially sold out. Try and get some more on the old T-Rig. Texas rigs hitting these points are going to, they might be kind of in here, but just not willing to go for the moving stuff. Fish. Got him. There we go. There we go. All right, y'all. Let me tell you what. After that storm, I'm thinking T rigs are going to be the way to go today. As the day goes on and the light gets lower, I have no doubt we'll get on a moving bite, but I think for now, it's going to be all about the bandito bug. Fish number two. All right, y'all. We had to do it. We have both <laughs> rigged up a Texas rig. Devin's now throwing the combo I was using, so that is going to be a go to rod with 20 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, we're both doing quarter ounce weights. I have now switched it up to the spray lettuce color, a little bit darker, should stand out more in this uh, stained clarity. But I'm actually throwing a muscle rod, so seven foot five, and this is a heavy extra fast as opposed to that medium heavy fast action. So uh, some big hook sets on the muscle rod. I would probably go with the muscle if you're talking about those bigger Texas rigs, bigs, things of that nature. The go to rod is so versatile you could use that for not only texas rigs but things like the clickbait you could also use it for cranks it's just it can cover just about everything we talked about so that go-to rod the muscle rod think about those bigger weighted baits top waters things of that nature and i'm going straight braid this is like a moss green and this is going to be fine since the clarity is not bad here and these fish are not necessarily line shy like they do get in the clearer water so if it was clearer water i'd probably be rocking fluoro but i'm going with 50 pound braid at the moment going to be no slack it's going to be monster hook sets let's go that pretty much got it as I was starting to swim it. First fish in the boat on that bandito bug. It was actually right whenever I was starting to swim it to recast it. That's why we say this bait is such a versatile bait because they'll still hit it while it is indeed swimming. Oh, oh gosh dang. Oh, he's gonna take you into the tree. Get out of the tree. Little guy, little guy. Little guy. He's modern size. 
T-rigs, huh? T-rigs are the move. Shoot. Oh, had one. He let it go. He's got it. There. Oh no. Dang it. Dang it. Oh. I'm sure my bandito bug is kind of messed up on the hook now and I won't get another bite. I'm just trying to work it slow because sometimes other fish are in the area and they're fighting over it or there's potential for a fish to come back and eat again. Usually not when you hook them like I did. So <sighs> that's just a little helpful tip. Sometimes you, you get a bite and he comes off. Keep fishing that bait. Don't just burn it back in because uh, you can get those fish oftentimes. But indeed, my bait was messed up after that hook set. That typically tends to happen that's why those hammer hooks are so good because they have that shelf to prevent your bait from slipping down so easily but you know on a fierce hook set it's just gonna it's just gonna happen part of the business trying to cast right up against the grass edges and right on these tree limbs and just get right on that cover that these fish like to relate to and hang around so uh, sure you could just cast anywhere right open water but with a texas rig you really want to cast by all the stuff and that's where the fish are hiding right in between the trees yep come on up bud oh and okay there you go and devin's on to dump first double up on t-rigs look at him go oh my gosh two in the boat <laughs> triple up torrance is on two with the t-rig it is a day out here y'all fall is here Oh my gosh. And to be honest, I thought this was going to be the least likely bait to catch all these fish today. I figured it was going to be on the moving baits just because the, the temps are cooling. But the thing is, again, I think it's all that storm yesterday. That storm has kind of got them in the T-rig mood. And that's what we got to do. We are thrilled to catch them this way. It's always fun setting the hook. Cheers to the sprayed lettuce and the California craw colors, y'all. Holy smokes, are they getting the job done? Oh, right when it hit the water. Oh my gosh. Oh. That fish bit it right when it hit the water. Oh no, oh, I'm so wrapped. How did that just happen? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, bandito bug got stolen on that one. He might've like just bit it and I just, I didn't even let him eat it, but usually, usually they tend to gobble the whole bandito bug up, no problem. Let me grab another. Where's the bandito bug? Last sprayed lettuce. We'll go through this and then I'll show you guys a, uh, a new color. We'll fish one I haven't ever fished before here and just a minute but no need to change it up a combination of greens and purples man this year it's just it's done so much it's it's ridiculous i really didn't have too much confidence in purple until i fished all these new purple colors that Guggen baits have been coming out with this year and now it's like my favorite <laughs> so you know how it goes i'm breaking out top water real quick for the first time y'all try to see if i can bring one up out of the grass with this popper usually the hookup ratio is pretty good with the treble hooks and uh the idea of throwing the blooper is making all that noise okay so you know we could be throwing a frog but the thing is i'm just going off of the conditions though which is this spot is a lot less clear than normal so i really want those fish to be able to key in on some noise and vibration rather than seeing the bait above them and that is why i'm choosing the popper rather than a frog right now no hits could be the area of the spot we're in or it could be the uh, the bait you say you got a big one huh do it do it. oh my gosh that is not small we got delivery <laughs> special delivery and a tankosaurus here. Look at that thing, dude. Giant. Dude, the Texas rig just picked up at the end of the day. Yup. It's been a grind, but. That is sick. I keep running out of storage, too. Yeah, I do a monthly iCloud subscription. That way it like backs my, oh, you do too? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sh boom, God. did you see the line swimming? Oh, yeah, like, dude, it yanked the rod down and it went straight yeah, left. Out there, there was no, like they're running with it every time. And I'm like, just leaning back. What's like, so, that's what he did. what's so weird is it's like, they're on the T-Rig and they're aggressive, yeah. but they're not hitting the moving baits. Yeah. Like how, how, what the heck is going on? Devin and I are actually going to show y'all some new colors real quick. So I'm going to break out the fire crawl. This is like a green on top and an orange on bottom. I always tear it up with this color on the trench hog. I don't know why I haven't thrown it a lot in the bandito, but now you're going to get to see it. And Devin's going to rock the Okeechobee crawl. This is a fantastic stained water bait right here. It's got a lot of flash with the blue flake and that green top. So basically the rule of thumb is natural greens and clear water. And then you'll go with uh, your black and blues and your darker colors in the stained water because those fish are really seeing the silhouette if it is really stained. So that's the idea there. Got him. Got him. What is it? It might be good. It might be good, huh? That thing is chilling. Is it big or small? Uh, it's small. <laughs> wow. Not what my heart said it might be whenever oh, I set that hook. Deceiving. He must have been running straight away from you. Your rod was like, it, it looked like it could have been decent size. God, it's like a giant. <laughs> Yay! 
This is a lure retrieval tool on this paddle, y'all. <laughs> you put your line in there and then you push that paddle down and it got that free that we weren't gonna be able to get out otherwise. For all you kayak anglers and potential John boat owners that might have one of those paddles. <laughs> you got one? No, not I have one. Oh. Now he's on again, came back for it. Okay, there we go. Golly, fire crawl. <laughs> Let's go. Woo. Put your finger on the hook point right there. Don't do that. Jeez. Time to switch it up a little bit. Let's break out the clickbait. Let's hit a little... Oh, got one clickbait. Oh my gosh, it could be okay. Oh, this could be a good one. I don't know, maybe he's in the grass. I cannot tell. We're, we're rolling away from him. No, he's small. There's the first one on the clickbait, y'all. <laughs> now that the sun is going down, we might find ourselves a little bit of a moving bite. Heck yes. Woohoo! I've been wanting to break this thing out a lot lately, but it just seems like uh, for the longest time they've been out deep in the summer. Now that we've switched over to fall. Oh boy, let me tell you, the clickbait's getting thrown. Oh, got him, got him. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go, y'all. I think we found him on the moving bite, which is always a ton of fun. So this setup right here is actually a little bit different. Usually I throw them on a go-to rod, but we had a reaction rod rigged up with like 12 pound fluoro. So I tossed it on here just because we've got some other rods occupied. So I'd go with a go-to rod for the uh, clickbait specifically, but the reaction is definitely gonna work. Sometimes you just gotta hammer those hook sets since it is that thicker gauge single hook. So, so what I'm gonna do is if I feel like there's a big one on here, I'm probably gonna back off that drag a little bit just because it is that lighter line. And I'm gonna have to play them out a little bit more before I bring them to the boat. We might even break out the net if I feel like I do have a big one on the hook and if you're using the clickbait what you want to do is you cast it out and you want to hold that rod at a 45 as you're bringing it back in right i know a lot of y'all are probably fishing left or right-handed setups but you want to keep that rod at a 45 degree angle you should always feel the flutter of the blade in the rod tip the rod tip is literally vibrating the whole time i'm bringing it back in hence vibrating jig now if you don't feel that you probably are in some grass and got caught up or maybe you've got some weight because a fish bit it. So if I feel like, okay, I'm just like reeling it in and it's just got this slight extra weight on it and I don't feel that flutter, I just give it a quick whip of the rod and a lot of times that will shed the grass. But if that doesn't work, you're gonna have to just bring it all the way back in, take the grass off, cast it back out. But it seems like tonight when they hit it, I, I can decipher that from the grass pretty easily. It seems to be an aggressive hit this evening which is different from the last few times we've been out here. So I am enjoying it. But yeah, rod tip 45, make sure you feel the vibration and you're in great shape. Oh, fish on. That was right off the bat. Smoked it right off of the reed edge there. Haven't seen it yet. I'm pretty sure it's tiny, but I've been rogue before. Yep, looks a little small. Nice fight in that one. Probably a pound and three quarters. I think he's just shy of the two mark. Definitely a fun fish. Oh, definitely a nice fight, buddy. Wow, and that hook got him good. Holy smokes. Sharp hooks on the clickbait, y'all. And this is that uh, shad pattern. I forget the name of the specific one with yellow and blue in it, but you really cannot go wrong. One of the reasons the clickbait is so effective in the stained water today is because these beads on here, and that's unique to the clickbait. So those beads are making noise as this blade is rocking back and forth, and it's really getting those fish attention. So definitely stand out key points on this bad boy. And I want to say if you're shopping during this club week and you use our discount, you could probably get two of these for like free. If you're calculating in that $10 off your first order of 25 or just the Carl's Member Week deals they've got going. So definitely check out shopcarls.com if you want to throw any of this good stuff right here. Oh, fish on right off the reeds again. Oh my gosh, the clickbait bite is on. This is too much fun, y'all. <laughs> All right, we're skiing this one in. He doesn't have near as much fight as the last one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get him off the hook throw him back in and cast right in the next little spot on those reeds because I got a feeling they're stacked and loaded. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Here we go. Just a little bit over to the left further from where I was and I caught that last one. Come on, fall frenzy. Oh, I saw him come up. I watched this tyke come up and smack it. There you go. First one on that chatterbait for me, and this, uh, I actually need to change out my saucy swimmer. I gotta put a saucy swimmer on this guy, so I'm gonna measure out to where I need that hook to come out of on the body. So I'm just gonna feed that in there. I get a rough idea of where it needs to go, but right up over that. Voila! In the grass. Oh, she's got one. Texas rigs today are just going wild. 
Okay, bye. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, got us one. All right, that's on the swim bait. Woo! Oh gosh, that's probably that might be the biggest one since we've been out here. That's what happens though when you break out the bigger baits, y'all. Okay, that one hit like a freight train too. That was sick. A 20 pound fluorocarbon, big heavy hook, and the 4.8 inch saucy swimmer. There we go, y'all. Wouldn't be surprised if we get one even bigger on this saucy swimmer now. Big swim baits for the big bass. Small when you got that good clarity and you wanna go for numbers, but this is what could bring in the absolute tank. Oh, oh, sh had it like right off the bat. I let him, let him go. <laughs> Another one on the T-Rig, okay. Swim baits and bandito bugs, I like that. Has been the MVP. I can just try not to see. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Little fish, big fish, little fish, big fish. Not little. Or is it in the grass? It's in the grass. It's not little, huh? Or it's, it's coming towards me. Oh, it's pretty big. Yep, biggest one of the day. Biggest one of the day. Here we go. All right. I guess I'm okay. Yeah, you're good. Bandito bug. Just when I was saying, got him right in that. Is that fire crawl? Fire crawl? Yep, fire crawl. Fire crawl, very similar to the Alabama crawl yep. that we have a lot in our trench hogs that does a lot of work. Cool. <sighs> Brought in an absolute salad with him. Gonna have to handle all of this mess here in a second. But no, I'd say probably, I don't know, two and three quart, two and a half. Yeah, that one, that, that one is actually looking like a three. He's looking pretty healthy. Potentially, look at those shoulders. Ooh, you're gonna grow up to be a big girl. Oh, this water is definitely, don't give me a shower, please, bye. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that water is definitely a little chillier. Yeah, after that rain. Yes. I don't know, for me it's Oh, top water, oh. gosh dang it. I figured I might get one over by that. Oh, what on earth are these bluegill doing? Come on, bass. Oh, that's a bass. That's a bass. There we go. Top water. I wasn't even paying attention. Oh my gosh. Did he come off? He came off. Wow. <laughs> Usually the treble hooks get him even when you're not looking. That's funny. That was a good blow up. I was about to say you Oh, got him. <laughs> there we go. All right. First bass on top water. I was going to say, this bite's got to kick in at some point. We just hit sunset. And oh my gosh, look at how this bass hit the popper. <laughs> Look at how that they hit the popper. That's not good. I probably got him with like six treble hooks. I'm gonna need those pliers. First topwater fish of the evening. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Try and get some more. Oh, got him. I don't know if that's a bass or a bluegill. <laughs> that's a light fish. That's a little, little bass. All right. And he's off. The time crunch. I ain't got time to be caught changing out no batteries got one yep. quick on the crankbait oh my gosh this is like our first time to throw a crankbait Devin grabbed a lipless oh my gosh i just got hit on the top water <laughs> we are at sunset y'all in fact a couple minutes passed and Devin secured one on a slam for our top five fall baits and here we go Whoa. top water to close it out whoa all right okay we're digging it oh there he goes okay double up to close out the evening let's try for a couple more y'all but that was a sick john boat sin catching everything we mentioned out of the box i've just been rocking with the popper as opposed to the frog or the buzzbait and i guess it's working so <laughs> we'll roll out on this one i think right here you guys what an awesome night <laughs> top water to close it out in the fall you guys got to be throwing it can't leave without at least trying the buzzbait a couple casts Got him. Oh, had him. Oh. 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 Guys, I just had a bite on the buzz bait. Two good blow ups back to back. If I had a trailer hook, oh my goodness. Top water is the way. Well, it got dark quick, y'all. By the time we got the John boat off the water, it was pitch black, and y'all weren't going to be able to see nothing. <laughs> 
yeah, there is some boxes on top of the car. Anyways, we took the deck off of the John boat. Since that storm yesterday, it was like completely waterlogged this morning and everything is still pretty damp. So we want to try and get that thing to dry out. Got the battery taken off. If you guys want to see like a, you know, we've had this for maybe half a year now, like a six month review of the John boat, we might do something like that for y'all. Let me know down in the comments. We can talk about what has been done to it, what we might like to do to it, or maybe you have some suggestions. But if that video is something of interest to you, absolutely let us know. But for now, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. We did catch something on everything we mentioned for our favorite top fall baits, which is exactly what we wanted. Could not ask for more. And I hope you guys picked up some tips along the way. Today just happened to be the Texas rig bite, but I have a feeling any one of those top five categories of baits is going to change on a daily basis as to what's catching them and what's not. You got to get them dialed in for the day. You got to find that pattern. Everything is different. We, I started thinking the Texas rig was going to be the MVP because of the storm yesterday. I figured it might be a little bit slower fishing and it was bluebird skies. Conditions said pretty much Texas rig, but I had hopes for the moving baits and they did kick in as the sun started to set as well as the top water. An absolutely insane day. If you want me to go more in depth on any one of those categories or have any questions, go ahead and fire away down below. I'm gonna try my best to answer everything. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I do wanna thank Carl's Bait and Tackle one more time for sponsoring today's episode. And uh, I'm losing baits as we speak, y'all. Go ahead and grab some at up to 30% off retail over there at shopcarls.com. Use code WESTON10 for your first purchase. And uh, yeah, we got you guys covered. Everything we threw today, you can pick up there as well as the rods. I believe they've still got in stock all the Guggen rods. I might be mistaken, but if you're a Carl's Club member, I know they go for a discounted rate. So check out the Guggen rods and we'll see you guys on the next episode. We have fun with y'all this evening rocking two GoPros on the John boat. Until next time, y'all, let's catch some tanks. Peace.